If you've ever wondered what the future of camera sensors might look like, well, this could be it. A new patent application shows us how perovskite materials could change the way light gets into our sensors. And it's not sci-fi. It's science. Real, dry, patent office approved science. And I'll break it down for you in just a moment. And if you're serious about staying ahead of the latest camera gear and patent applications, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It really helps this channel grow and it keeps you in the loop. In Canon's patent application JP2025 074044, filed on October the 23rd, 2023, and published May the 1st, 2025, Canon claims to provide a photoelectric conversion unit having both mass productivity and uniformity of the photoelectric conversion efficiency. And I know that's a mouthful, but trust me, this is not one of those lens caps or pixel peeping patent applications. It's about a camera sensor that might just be cheaper, faster, and even better. Like a sandwich that doesn't fall apart halfway through eating it. But it's important to note that this patent application doesn't call out camera sensors specifically, but it does use the phrase photoelectric conversion unit. It's a basic process that the sensor's responsible for. It's taking that incoming light, those photons, and converting them into electrons. And that's what allows us to capture the light. It's a fundamental function of the sensor, and it's easily applied to sensors to provide a better, faster sensor. So I'm going to focus on this application, which makes sense considering that Canon's an imaging company. Traditional CMOS sensors rely on silicon as the substrate. And it's great, but it is pricey and power hungry and a kind of diva when it comes to manufacturing, especially when we want to make large sensors quickly and cheaply. The patent does point out something important. Current photoelectric devices suffer from low production speed and inconsistent efficiency. That means that one batch might work out and the next batch, well, not so much. And when you're building sensors by the millions for cameras, that kind of inconsistency, well, it's worth fixing. So how does Canon solve this problem? Well, it's all built using a large area film formation methods like die coating or spray coating. That gives Canon the ability to scale up without sacrificing quality. No spill coating here. That stuff's for science labs and not production lines. Think of it like painting a wall with a roller instead of a toothbrush. One gets the job done, the other makes you question your life's choices, as well as your intellect. The fix? Well, it's actually a smarter way to build the photoelectric conversion units, which again is part of the sensor. And it's if you didn't have that, there's, well, it would be like blinding your camera. The photoelectric conversion unit is what takes the photons as it comes in, converts them into electrons. And by how it captures the light into the photosites, it's able to determine how bright a given light is, whether it's green, red, or blue. Now, if that cell is fully filled up, we're clipping and it's, you've got the maximum value. And the real sensitivity is down in the well where you capture in your shadows. And that's where the dynamic range comes in. So what they're trying to do is often dig the well deeper to capture more electrons. But if you overexpose, guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna fill up that well and that's where you get the clipping and the overexposure. So let's get to the technical stuff of how this is all done. Instead of using silicon, the patent used perovskite crystals. Yeah, I know. Sounds like a Star Trek mineral. There's no way of recrystallizing the dimension. Sorry, sir. We can't even do that in the 23rd century. But it's a real material, and it's got some impressive tricks that it can perform. This patent uses a multi-layer structure. You've got the substrate, two, the first electrode, seven, and the photoelectric conversion layer, 11, and that's made of perovskite. And I know I'm not saying it right. And then of course you've got the charge transport layer that includes the particles, 12, and the insulating resin. It's then all topped off with a cherry, which is a second electrode, number three. Well, this could potentially be a big deal if Canon's able to take this technology and, well, migrate it into sensors. But there's one thing to understand here. We're talking about changing the materials to produce a photoelectric conversion unit. Now there's different photoelectric conversion units, ones used in solar cells, for example, camera sensors, and they function differently. Now, depending on the tolerances, and that's what we don't know here, it could work for very, very well for cameras. And this could, well, it could result in several key improvements. And as a photographer, you're gonna to wanna to take note here. 
The holy grail for any photographer is being able to work in low light with very little noise. But also, and this could be very interesting for some, especially those chasing UFOs, the second benefit is to capture a broader range of wavelengths, including the near-infrared. Very handy for those of you chasing the supernormal, or what is it called, the paranormal, UFOs and whatnot. And lastly, it's to provide flexible surfaces, even working with curved sensors. That means better image quality, faster production, or maybe even sensors that can go places that traditional ones can't. This patent was filed in Japan in 2023, so that gives us a bit of a timeline. Canon usually takes between three to five years to turn a new sensor concept into a shippable product. And while the technology would have a huge impact on the solar cell industry, the lessons learned with the photoelectric conversion technology could also be applied to sensors. Why develop a technology for one sector when you could easily use it or adapt it for another? And if this new technology is being applied to mirrorless cameras, to the sensors for APS-C as well as full frame, well then we could see benefits, but we're not going to see the benefits anytime soon. I don't think we're going to see it in the R7 Mark II or the R6 Mark III. Um, but perhaps the Canon EOS R5 Mark III, well that's far enough down the road that we could potentially see that in there. Or maybe even the R1 Mark II. What about the R2? Now, simple, there is no R2 and there never is going to be one. At this point, we don't even think there's going to be an R3, but more on that, well, maybe I've already released that video. Anyhow, I want to say a big thanks to you for watching this video to the very end for supporting this channel, whether you're just liking, commenting, or if you're purchasing various camera gear through my affiliate links down below. I appreciate that every time I see somebody buy something, whether it's a battery or whether it's a full blown system, it's very much appreciated because what you're doing is you're keeping this channel going, you're keeping the lights on. It's very much appreciated. Whenever you click on that link, and even if you go off and click on other stuff, once you check out, I can receive anywhere from two to 5%. And that helps support this channel in a very big and meaningful way. In a way, it's very democratic. This channel, whether it thrives or survives or not, is based on the content I put out there and whether you think it's worth watching or not. And if you watch it and you believe in supporting me by clicking on my links, it's the best of both worlds. YouTube can be frustrating at times, as Jared Hoyman has said in his recent video about 10 days ago, but I love it because I love cameras. I love lenses. I love the technology. I, I love covering patent applications because you know why? And this is huge. This is big because I'm actually learning how lenses work internally, how camera sensors work, the photoelectric conversion units. When I first started covering patent applications, I'm going, oh my God, what is a photoelectric conversion unit? But it now all starts to make sense. And you can tell I've been reading a lot of patent applications because I refer to it as a unit, not a subsystem or a process or a piece of technology. Anyhow, I'm not gonna drone on any further. So I gotta get a new table. This one creaks a lot. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a great day. And if you want to know what goes on behind the scenes, then maybe click that join button and see what membership levels I have where I take you behind the scenes. And maybe it's time to do another one of those behind the scenes videos. I think I should. Anyhow, thank you so much for, wa for watching. Have yourself a great day and we'll see you again soon.